Thanks very much, everybody. Um, what I'm going to talk about a little bit is a question which is often asked of this project, which is, what are we going to do uh, with the building? Um, are we going to reinstate St. Peter's Kilmahue uh, as it was uh, in 1967 when it was completed? What is going to happen to this place? And I always find myself crippled by either inarticulacy or verbal diarrhea, so I think I'll go for something in between the two, because the huge question is, it's an extraordinary divisive place, uh, as Angus has already outlined. This is not a place so there, it looks like a sort of pleasing symphony in space and light, but it ain't. Uh, it upsets huge numbers of people um, as much as it um, conjures enthusiasm um, from others, and it always has, right since the beginning right since the doors opened uh, on the building. So there are some people for whom this sort of vision, uh, in a sense, symbolizes the value uh, of that place. It's, it's a wonderful piece of architecture. And then there are others for whom something else uh, and its present condition uh, is valuable. Um, this uh, I have never ceases to amaze me when I walk with people into this space, uh, the literal gasps that fall from their mouths. And you know, we might think back to the 18th century and Burke making the distinction between the beautiful and the sublime. Uh, and actually, uh, there's something uh, of that going on here. There are as many people who value this building in this condition as there are those who value it in the condition as it was completed. So what are we going to do about it? Well, what it isn't is this. I'm going to show you a sort of mini history of art lesson in three seconds. This is a painting. Uh, from the 1840s by a painter called Thomas Cole uh, of a medieval castle, lots of people running up and down, rather like the baronial house at Kilmahue, um, except sort of the medieval version. Um, and this image is called The Past. And then what Cole did was paint a companion piece uh, to a diptych, and this is the present. Uh, and what it reminds us is that the present is always the ruin uh, of the past. Uh, it's always about the unfulfilled, shattered ambitions of other people who came before us. And my, that might seem to be a tragic view. What it also does it, is it asks us then a question of if there is the past and the present, then what is the future? And traditionally, I suppose, there are two possible answers that one could come to uh, with that. One of them is this one which has been the traditional approach to the future of the past, which is to make it look like the past again, uh, and to somehow restore what previously existed. But what I want to try and put forward to you this evening is the counterintuitive proposition that the positive future might be this one. Uh, and that if only we could make this one work, then actually we might have a more positive future for a place like this. So we are not talking about restoring St. Peter's Kilmahue to its former glory in 1967 or 1977 or whenever it was, because the clock does not get put back, however pleasingly reversible it might seem to be uh, when one does that uh, through two paintings. The clocks do, don't, do not run backwards. Because what's happened in that period of abandonment are uh, very strange and curious and wonderful things uh, on uh, that site. And there's just three examples I wanted to show you of things which I don't know whether it's great art or what it is, but it's certainly uh, extraordinary uh, in some form or another. And this place, in the period of its abandonment since 1986, has inspired more other work about it uh, than it ever did uh, when it was completed. Okay, it's a place which has generated uh, an enormous uh, amount uh, of inquiry and fascination. And so we have no intention of trying to erase this period of history from this building. The extraordinary period of history in which these things were created and people did all those terrible and wicked things in the monastery and every time you go there they're setting light to another bit uh, and so on uh, might be scary, they might be spiky, they're certainly very dirty, but they are part of the history of the place. And to erase them 
and to take them away and go, we can scrub all that and pretend it never happened uh, is not an option because clocks don't run backwards. The present is the ruin of the past and actually that is what makes the present interesting in relation uh, to the past. So Hayden's going to talk about this a little bit more, but we've done a series uh, of activities uh, on uh, the site so far. There's one thing uh, that's an oddity is, in a sense, we're standing here this evening going, well, uh, NVA have got a large amount of money from the HLF to be able to do a capital plan uh, for the future of a building uh, like this. And what usually happens in that case and what the pressure to happen usually is, is that the hoardings go up, you're all told to go away, come back in five years' time when it's all finished and welcome into the beautiful, immaculate, sparkling white elephant that will have been prepared for you uh, in that time. And actually, uh, if that happens, then it will be a white elephant. And what is absolutely crucial is that people are engaged in the process of the redevelopment or the reoccupation of that place. Uh, over time. So what we've done is without waiting for the planning permission, without waiting for the funding, is just say, well, what can we do now? And very simply, for example, what you can just see here and see perhaps more closely here are attempts to uh, reoccupy the space. This is a game. This is a sort of issue of acting out where we took uh, sort of children's occupation devices, furniture, tents, and so on, and go, okay, let's mark out, according to the building regulations, what are safe spaces within this building at present, without clearing the glass, without trying to remove the asbestos, without building balustrades or anything. One of the most challenging comments that I certainly encountered uh, while developing uh, while we've been developing the ideas for this project, was we were talking at the Edinburgh Book Festival a couple of years ago, and Izzy Metstein, who's one of the original architects of the building, uh, spoke to me afterward, and he said, don't underestimate the problems of making this building safe on all levels, metaphoric, literal, physical, uh, and uh, because I think he understood the idea that the only way, well, there's one way of doing it, and that's to turn the clock back, but given that clocks don't turn back, then what are you going to do? Uh, to uh, this place. So it's not easy to turn the clock back. What that means is that this layered place, which might have been a seminary once upon a time, as we've just seen when we were having drinks before, it was a, a baronial mansion once before that, and before that it was a medieval castle, and before that it was a monk's cell. It's a very long and complex story, and the concrete seminary and its ruins are only one small part of a story that reaches back to about the 8th or 9th centuries AD. And if it's going to have a continued longevity of that sort, then it's acknowledging that the next part of that is going to be a, a, another story. So I'm going to leave you just with these two possible images of why a ruin can be your future rather than be your past. And that is because I love this building, I mean, it's all been restored and tidied up, and it's very boring now. Uh, but in the 18th century, when Piranesi was drawing it here, it was both, at one and the same time, the forum of the Emperor Nerva, and it was somebody's cottage where they put their washing out. And actually, that is an enormously positive an idea. This image that you're just about to see, yeah, that was the Roman forum once upon a time, but here it's making a fantastic cattle market in the 18th century and doing all sorts of things that just because the original architects of it never intended them to do doesn't devalue them. Places can be five things at once. They can be two things at once. Why should they be one thing at once? The clocks don't go backwards. We will never be, find ourselves sitting in 1967. And actually, living among ruins is what all of us are doing all of the time. So the idea is to find a language and a way of doing that.